Hi, and thanks for watching this video, which is about my 6502 homebrew computer. This is a 2022 update because I've been neglecting my homebrew for uh, several months uh, while I was working on other projects. Um, in particular, I did quite a few things on my old Auric, which I still have uh, on my desk uh, next to my homebrew computer along with the Atari. Um, but uh, I wanted to uh, go ahead and do some enhancements to it. So I'm coming back and revamping my homebrew computer. It's a project that's been going for a while. Um, but even though I haven't done much with it, uh, still last year in 2021, uh, in the summer, I went along to the uh, Retro Computer Museum um, at uh, in Cambridge and met some great folks there, by the way, and uh, highly recommend uh, if anybody uh, wants to uh, and interested in uh, home computers from uh, back in the day uh, to go along there. Um, but uh, yeah, met some great people uh, and there was a bit of interest uh, on the homebrew I'd built. Um, the, the, the point about this homebrew, uh, just as a recap, is to try and build a computer using more or less period parts, period as in early to mid 80s, uh, that could have been um, found in WH Smiths of the day uh, next to the Commodore 64s and the Spectrums um, and you could just switch on and program it. So that's what I wanted to do is build a fully fledged, fully capable computer. Um, and um, yeah, I was uh, delighted there was a, a little bit of interest uh, on the project that I'd been uh, working on. Um, and I met a lovely guy uh, called Tom from uh, Wi-Fi Sheep, Y-Fi Sheep. Uh, who brought along some of his creations, which were uh, Raspberry Pi and Arduino based, but um, they uh, they look spectacular because uh, he had blinken lights, and I remember thinking I would like to have blinken lights. Um, my computer, as you can see, is a a mess of um, of wires. It, it's all on breadboard, and that's why uh, I tongue in cheek call it the BBC, the breadboard computer. Um, and it's essentially a, a 6502 at the heart of it with 128k of RAM, 64k of ROM. Um, I have two uh, input output chips, 6522s. I have a serial interface chip as well. And um, here there is the graphics chip, which is the Texas Instruments 9918A. Uh, you might recognize that from the MSX back in the day, MSX1. And then just hiding behind here, behind the keyboard, is a AY38910 from General Instruments, which is the same sound chip found in the Auric and uh, I think also the MSX and the Atari ST. In fact, I suppose, in one sense, this homebrew computer has, um, is kind of close to the MSX, apart from using a 6502 rather than a Z80. Um, but of course, it's a very different architecture with the, um, the 6502. Everything is memory mapped, so all I.O. is memory mapped. So uh, it, it's not um, the same from an architecture point of view, but some of the key components are the same as that you find in an MSX. And it all sits inside a BBC micro case and uses a BBC micro keyboard. So um, that that's the recap of my homebrew computer. What I wanted to do though is is talk about blinking lights. That's what I said I wanted to do. I've got a few other things that I want to um, add to the computer. Some um, extra capabilities um, that I've been thinking about. Um, but let me just fire it up and um, let me go on to the screen here. So um, I'll switch on first and okay so that's the composite out from the tms 9918a um, you don't see anything because by default the homebrew boots up uh, over serial so uh, i have actually got a, um, a terminal connected to this as well so i could uh, communicate with the homebrew um, over uh, over just a, uh, a terminal emulator. So, uh, for example, um, if I show you what I've got here, here's my my terminal emulator, Putty. If I press uh, the reset key, the break key, which resets the computer, and uh, you can see there's uh, the terminal. And if I type on my 
computer, I can, yeah, you can see that it will accept inputs. So it's just like using a terminal. Um, but the keyboard is usable. Uh, what you have to do is, rather than just resetting the keyboard with break, if you reset the keyboard whilst pressing the F0 key, um, then it will realize that you want to use the built-in keyboard. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just remount my camera. So I'm pressing F0 and pressing break at the same time. And now uh, it boots up using the keyboard. So I can do can type on the lovely BBC keyboard. Um, so, uh, but I didn't show you the blinking lights. So um, how, how does that work? Uh, running as it does at more than five megahertz, uh, most things, most signals on the on the computer are going from one to zero so quickly that you couldn't possibly see uh, any kind of flashing, um, and uh, that's just the nature of these things. It, it, it basically runs at too high a clock speed. However. Um, well, I did some experiments, and what I found was that uh, if I attach the um, some of the blinking lights to the top six bits of the address bus, that the blue the blue wires here is the address bus, and the top six bits are connected to the um, the LEDs. And then here I've got two more LEDs. Um, you can see actually that they're kind of on, but not very bright. But these two LEDs are showing me the which uh, ROM bank number is being executed by the homebrew. Um, I've got 64K of ROM and 128K of RAM. Now, uh, anyone who knows about the 6502 and uh, most 8-bit computers of the day, they could only access 64K at a time. So how do we uh, access 128K as I claim on here? Um, well, firstly, the 64K of ROM is split up into 4 times 16K banks, and uh, these banks are controlled by the 6522, which is this thing here in the middle of shot. Um, it's got some ports that, ports that I'm connecting to essentially select which one of four banks that I'm, I want. Um, and, of course, and the reason why this is dim is because the computer is, of course, doing lots of things. We can't see because it just seems to be flashing the cursor and waiting for input, but it's constantly running. And um, it's flicking between a couple of different banks here. One of the banks is basic itself, D flat, and the other bank is the uh, the BIOS, the input output system where I'm looking for a key. Uh, and also there's an interrupt running. That's why the cursor is flashing and the, and the screen is being updated with the flashing cursor. Uh, so and these are in different banks, so that's why um, the dim light is there because no bank is on for very long. H however, um, I can uh, so that's not very impressive in this in terms of they're not blinking, they're not blinking lights, are they? Um, but what we can do um, if I type DIR, so I've got an SD card attached to this uh, over here. <clears throat> if I type DIR, I'm pressing Enter. And just watch the lights. Ta-da! And there's the directory listing. Um, so now to make this a little bit more, I'm doing a very bad job here. Repeat DIR until. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the built-in basic to just keep showing the directory, to showing the directory listing. And when I press enter here, now we'll see there's stuff happening. So this is the top six bits of the address bus. Uh, it's a shame that the camera's not picking up the different colors here, but they are multicolor LEDs. Um, on the ROM banks, now you see something slightly different. The purple light is um, flashing more regularly because that's where the code um, sits in a bank, in a separate bank for the SD card handling. And then the um, the other light, the blue light, is a bit uh, more uh, is brighter than it was because it's spending quite a lot of its time then displaying the outputs. So that's um, an example of the blinking lights. Um, is there anything else that can demonstrate how this works? Uh, yes, there is. So if I type wait. 
um, let's say 500, that's going to be 10 seconds, that's a 10 second delay. What happens here is that D flat takes control and sits in a tight loop for 10 seconds. And what that will mean is that uh, we will see the blue light more or less be steady and brighter than it is because it's sitting inside the, the, the basic ROM while, for 10 seconds. So let's try that. Um, I'm going to press enter. Um, I'm pressing enter now. And as, a, as I said, uh, the blue light is now on or much more on than it was because it's not really flicking between bands. It's not waiting, it's not waiting for input. Uh, was that 10 seconds? But anyway, um, and now it's gone back to its normal state because the it's at the ready prompt. Um, if I go back up there, um, I'll just uh, do it again. If I press enter. Um, also, the address bus is just sitting in a tight loop. So um, it's obviously somewhere in the code where it's just sitting in a tight loop. And then again, when it goes back to the ready prompt, you can see the lights blinking. Now, these, this is just demonstrating the lights blinking in a specific kind of configuration. Uh, but I do think that um, when, I, when I'm running a proper program, then we'll be able to actually see the, the, the lights blinking. So um, I will load a program, not today, because I've already gone on too long. Uh, but if I do that, so, infinite repeats uh, of, a, of a directory listing. Uh, hopefully you can see those lights blinking away. So those are my blinking, blinking lights. They're not as great as Tom's blinking lights from Wi-Fi Sheet, but uh, I thank him for inspiring me to add some of my own. And um, I will have other projects that I want to, uh, or enhancements uh, that I want to add to this project. Uh, better file handling. I want to be able to create directories, not just navigate them. Um, natively on the file handling system I've built here. Uh, plus I want to um, create a better way of using file channels to be able to execute or send, sorry, commands over the serial port as well as using the keyboard at the same time. At the moment it's one or the other from basic. It's available from machine code, but I want to add some commands to my basic interpreter to do that. Um, and uh, and also allow uh, the transfer of binary files a little bit like an FTP or a, or a, a simple FTP uh, type kind of protocol to be able to send uh, files over serial rather than having to uh, pop the SD card and then use Windows Explorer, uh, File Explorer to, uh, to transfer files. So uh, there we are. I've gone way too long, 13 minutes plus. Um, I hope it was interesting. I'm going to do some more videos because I think the old ones that I've got on the channel, um, they're really poor quality, uh, bad sound. I'm not sure this is much better, but I hope it is a little bit. Uh, and I will do some further updates and show some of the software running as well. But uh, thank you very much for watching my video.